What is up? I am Crypto Mason and welcome back to the Crypto Mason YouTube channel. Shout out to the Gold Squad. We look for gold in every single aspect of our lives and we always find it. Now, before we begin, big happy Thanksgiving to all of my American audience. Canadian Thanksgiving was October 11. I am Canadian if you didn't know that. But big happy Thanksgiving to all of the American audience. Take a look at this. We have something to right away be thankful for. Look at this. We, we can be thankful for all of the green on the charts today. The market is slowly pushing back up here. We're way above 2.6 trillion right now. Volume is up at almost 150 billion, which is real nice. Um, but yes, happy Thanksgiving. Now, let's get into this. I'm very excited for this video. Um, there's just so much good stuff that came out today. Like, I'm very excited for this video. We even have a pre-sale that we will potentially be able to get into. Yes, a pre-sale. Yeah, you know I'm not big on the pre-sales, but this one I could be big on. I could be big on and I could be participating. Um, so let's get into it right now. We've got a lot of stuff to cover. You're definitely going to want to watch to the end. Make sure you smash the like button, click the subscribe button, post notification bell, all of that stuff. Also, make sure you follow me on, uh, on Twitter here. Here is my Twitter. Make sure you spell it correctly. This is also my Instagram username right there okay let's go so we take a look at the daily uh crypto bubbles today we see that everything is green and gala has continued to rally dude that's gonna get to a dollar right there gala is up two hundred seventy six thousand percent on the year that is a complete bust that i missed however i did hold some gala nfts which did sell for a lot because gala was pumping so take a look at this we see green all around. We've got mana uh, retracing a little bit. Let's check out sand. I can't even find sand. Uh, interesting. But let's look at the charts right here. We have everything basically in the green. Bitcoin is pushing back up. Basic attention token and Curve DAO. You guys know I recommended Curve DAO on my TikTok one week ago. Okay? One week ago, that was way down. It was not. Uh, in fact, it was 55% down. So shout out to you. If you, uh, if you like that Curve DAO, Curve DAO will continue to go. It will continue. So Curve DAO is still a good buy right now, in my opinion. Still a good buy right now, in my opinion. Okay, let's get into Bitcoin. So what do we see here with Bitcoin? On the daily, we've been watching this short signal right here, that, uh, that red X. It has played out pretty nicely, right? You would have been way up if you shorted on the daily, which is very hard for me to do, I've noticed uh is like because i'm like new to leverage trading and just day trading in general so staying in a and monitoring a trade like that on the daily is very hard but today have we printed the bottom here look at this market cipher is giving us that glorious green dot and it's on the top of a momentum wave so right this momentum wave we can see this came up and it's gonna go like this so how big is this one? Hopefully it's freaking this big, right? Hopefully that momentum wave on the upside is going to be big. And this is on the daily, by the way. So we've seen like a lot of, you know, this RSI came all the way down here. Stochastic RSI came all the way down. Right now, the stochastic RSI uh, or the normal, R no, the stochastic RSI is hovering right on that 60 line, which is super interesting. And we also see this actually coming into what looks like it's like half a bearish and half a bullish right here in terms of these EMAs. When these EMAs are <clears throat> like light blue and white, that means that it's a bullish trend, right? But when we get something like this, as you can see, these slowly start to turn gray and, uh, and kind of dull. And then we see that that was obviously uh action all the way to, to the downside right there but let's check out just for fun let's give you an insight into market cipher uh what's happening on the 10 minute so looks like see all of these these yellow diamonds right here that means bearish continuation right all of this means bearish continuation 
we did have this reversal kind of played out. That's kind of a miss by Market Cipher, a little bit. Uh, we did have this crazy short signal. Man, I need to just sit here and watch the 10 minute Bitcoin chart. Because if I would have got in on this right here, and if you just trust it, like just for a risky play, like if you want to be a complete degenerate, just risk it for one time and just like take one of these, like when you see this printed, don't even wait for another candle. That's bad advice. And it's not advice. In fact, I don't give advice here. I just do what I do and that's it. But yeah, you would have been, you would have been cashing in here. Let's see the percentage. Oh yeah. That's an easy 1% right there. Wow. On the 10 minute. So moving on plan B was wrong. Plan B was wrong. Wow. Plan B says floor model 98K November close will probably be a first miss after nailing August, September, and October. So he nailed three and he's missed one. The stock to flow model not affected and indeed on track towards 100K. So he really thinks we're going to 100K. Let me retweet this actually. Uh, that's important to, for the masses to see. Root. Take a look at this. He's doing some Bitcoin bull market geometry right here. <clears throat> and we can see on the 2021 one, it looks like he like zoomed it out. He zoom zoomed it out, right? Because this shows that we're going to astronomical numbers, 392K in fact, right? And he's comparing these with this, this triangle thing right here. And uh, this first peak area box and then the 70% drop area. And we can see on the bottom, he has the dates. So he's saying that this will extend into 2022. So he's saying, but looking at the shape of the Bitcoin bull markets, 2022 is either going to be insane or human psychology will have to be different this time. I think it's going to be insane. And why, why can't I think it's going to be insane, right? We want it to be insane. Why wouldn't we want it to be insane? I'm not bearish. I'm permable on crypto because I want this to just go to the moon. Everything, right? Alan Ow. Alan Ow says Bitcoin broke out of its falling wedge on Thanksgiving. Its price rose back to 58K amidst a bearish sentiment. Take a look at that. We're in a falling wedge. So what a falling wedge is, look, you draw the line from the top of this, right? And you hit all the tops. So here's a top. You hit that with the line. Here's another top. You hit that with a line. And we see the bottoms also. That's how you make a falling wedge. So we see a falling wedge right here. And we broke out of it. Like we broke above that top line, right? He also says the 14, uh, 14 RSI is about to break the red trend line. And stochastic RSI is poised to reach 3472. Okay, so that's on the bottom there. RSI is basically an indicator called relative strength index, and it shows if the crypto is overbought or oversold. Okay, so above that line is oversold, uh, or yeah, overbought, sorry. And below that, below these lines is oversold. Moving on, Digital Pound Foundation is talking with people from Facebook. Take a look at this. Uh, incredible people from Facebook, R3, Square, and TCS. Okay, that's Tata. That's uh, Tata Communication. That's on Hedera's Governing Council. Speaking of Hedera's Governing Council, did I pull that up? Yes, I did. Here it is. Speaking of the Governing Council, they have just updated this website. So it's very cool. You can see, and Tata Communications is right there. So what we can do now is go to this website, and it's very simple. You can just click it, status.hedera.com. <clears throat> all symptoms, uh, all systems operational. And we scroll down right here. And we see Hedera mainnet individual nodes. And you can see all of the nodes. There's Google's node in Finland, right? Here's Boeing's node in Toronto, Canada. Very cool. IBM's node is in Washington, USA. There's Tata right there. So you can see these are really, this is some real stuff right here, right? There's no lying about like these council members are really running nodes on the Hedera network. So this is cool though. Digital Pound Foundation and Facebook. So Joseph Lubin right here talking about Ethereum. This is a one minute clip. You're definitely going to want to watch it. Look what he says. Just look what he says. Yeah, at one point, I believe 50% um, of the CD-ROMs on the planet uh, were uh, being manufactured uh, effectively to distribute uh, the AOL software. Uh, yeah. And so AOL did an amazing job in onboarding the early majority. So we, we've 
Ethereum essentially has the uh, the innovators and uh, the early adopters, um, but now we're crossing the chasm and it's time to onboard the tens and hundreds of millions. So he's literally saying that Ethereum is AOL. That's what he's saying, like it's outdated, right? They have the first innovators, but now it's time to cross the chasm and onboard all these people. And we know Ethereum can't do that or the network's going to like blow up. Like it, as of now, it can't do it. So that's from Digital Asset Investor. Let's keep it moving. We have this from Kevin Cage. The Depository Clearing Corp or Depository Trust and Clearing Corp, right, is a clearinghouse operator that says it processed over two quadrillion, quadrillion worth of securities, has moved a distributed ledger technology settlement pilot program from proof of concept to the development phase. Big. They, they processed two quadrillion. Two quadrillion, not trillion. Oh my goodness, that is insane. And speaking of trillions, speaking of trillions, Grayscale puts out a new report right here with a nice, I love this right here. They put out, they put out a new report and look at this. If we just search trillion here, they say the metaverse opportunity extends far beyond gaming. The metaverse is estimated to be a trillion dollar revenue opportunity. Okay, let's keep scrolling. What else did they say? Um... The two, uh, yeah, no, no, no. Oh, yeah, yeah. The two trillion market cap of the gaming sector and the 15 trillion dollar market cap of Web 2.0 companies could shift to the metaverse. And look at this mind blowing graph right here. This is the metaverse. This is Facebook meta alone. This is gaming. That's a uh, Web 2.0 metaverse. That's going to shift to the Web 3.0 metaverse. Metaverse coins will be $15 trillion, right? I saw this $1 trillion and I'm like, that's pretty small. That's like just Bitcoin's market cap, right? This is the potential for metaverse is $15 trillion. Now, speaking of another metaverse project, this is not sponsored. Shut up. All the people who think this is sponsored. Meta Hero, right? is launching Everdome, which is a pre-sale. So you're going to have to do your own research. Apparently, I don't know the full details yet, but apparently if you held 10,000 MetaHero, you get access to this pre-sale. And you can see how insane this looks. I'm not going to play it. I'll play a little bit. Like, look at that. Like, imagine a metaverse is that that's not that blocky, you know? All the metaverses right now are like blocky Roblox type of things but they're planning to actually scan and have these crazy uh, graphics, right? So Everdome is the hyper-realistic metaverse. So I don't know if I'm going to be participating in this. I'm just giving you an official warning that they're coming out with this. I don't, I do not like how they're coming out with this, you know? Like, I don't like how it's just so fast and it seems like they're capitalizing on the hype of MetaHero. I mean, that's what you should do, but it seems really fast and possibly rushed. But if if we can get into a 100x presale, I would love that, okay? I would love that. Um, so, yeah, this is cool, though. Very, very cool. So, moving on. Shiba Inu puts out this weird video. Watch this. 15 seconds. Look at this weird video. To me, that looks like a rocket ship. So, they put out this mysterious video. Doesn't mean anything, probably. People are like, what the heck did I just watch? <laughs> now, crypto poses no big risk to the economy so far. Bank of Canada. Just throwing this in here. We're going to have a little regulation section right now. We're not at the point of yet thinking that this is a big risk for the economy, but this is something we're keeping an eye on very closely. All I ask of the Bank of Canada and Canada in general, do not follow suit with the USA and how they, they f do this. Please make your own stuff and be smart about it. Do not do not uh, handle this how the USA is currently handling this. Come on. Uh, Coinbase CEO is speaking at a JP Morgan event after a bombshell report on Ripple and XRP. So, November 30, um, there will be a fireside chat 
and this will be watched online. So maybe we can we can do a live stream on this channel and watch this together. Uh, it looks like it's pretty long though. It's three hours, but maybe we can watch the Coinbase CEO part on here. Let me know if you guys want that. Now, the German government is making crypto history. They're the first ones to actually uh, mention crypto and blockchain like specifically. Very interesting right there. They say we need a new dynamic in relation to in relation to the opportunities and risks from new financial innovations, crypto assets, and business models, we advocate a level playing field. That's what it's all about. We're leveling the playing field right here. The SEC has an open meeting on December 2 to include crypto panel discussion. That is all we've got for today. Some regulation talk at the end there as as is needed. If any if any influencer is like not talking about regulations, they're sort of not giving you the full truth because this is going to absolutely do something massive to the industry. And we will be covering that when it happens. But that is all we've got. Make sure you follow me on Twitter, Instagram, join the Telegram group, leave a like on the video on your way out, and goodbye. Crow,